Okay, here we go. This is our basic outline for today. Um, and just to remind you, uh, we'll have some homework, uh, a, a small one uh, on chapter 11 and a, another small one on chapter 18, a kind of a preview. Uh, we'll be talking about chapter 18 tomorrow in class. So we'll try to finish up our pressure uh, and fluids stuff today. Uh, before we do that, however, I want to go over the amendment to the syllabus. Um, could you help me pass out some papers? Could you help me pass out? Just go up the aisle and just give them out. This is the amendment. Just go up that aisle. Just hand them out in bunches. Don't count them out. Just hand, hand, hand bunches out. And what we've got is... Uh, the lab grade is going into, just really quick, just, just hand them out in bunches. You handed them out as, oh, okay. Uh, disperse it upward and, and to the left or to the right. Okay. All right, so it's basically a one-page handout. This is the part of the syllabus that I have amended after being alerted uh, yesterday about it. If you have more in your row than you need, hand them up, uphill. Send them uphill. Who doesn't have a handout yet? Just a few. You don't have one? We need a few down here. Who's got some extras up there? Anybody got extras? Send them down to the front now. It looks like you guys back there have a ton of extras. Send them down here to the front. Send the pile of extra. No, send them this way. This way. You don't have to organize. Okay, just send them. <laughs> just hand those down all the way to the front now. Just hand them down. You don't have to be ultra neat. It just has to get downhill. And there we go. All right, good. Hand it on down. Yay. Hand it on down. Come on, you guys. Here we go. One more row. There you go. All right. Okay. All right, so uh, back to business. Now, as I mentioned, um, the lab grade is going to go into the grade book, um, into your semester grade as 60 points. Now, I don't even know what the lab TAs got, and it may be different for all the other lab sections, but it'll be some kind of a percentage, you know, out of 150 or whatever it is. And then, so I'll convert that percentage uh, to 60 points, and I'll round up, you know, so you get the benefit of the doubt. And, uh, and then add that in. So but what that makes it is everything else in the, in the list of tasks here is the same. So the change is that we're adding 60 points for the lab. All right. Now that's going to be roughly 20%, about 19.35%. Uh, total now is 310. Now that means that the grade scale or the grades table on uh, the syllabus also has changed. So let's take a look at that, just slightly. Now the percentages are still the same. 90% of 310 
is uh, 279. So that'll be the threshold for an A semester grade. All right now, I've been told that the labs are fairly easy to get a good grade, so don't blow it. All right, uh, try to get all those dineros that you can. All right, so 233 um, is a is the threshold for a B. 186 threshold for a C. Uh, still 60 percent though, 60 percent of 310. Uh, 155 is uh, the threshold for passing, D. And then less than that is an F. And hopefully nobody in here will be uh, dealing with that. All right, questions about the amendment? All right, let's keep going. I have a clicker question for you. Uh, so get your clicker. And if, if you haven't gotten the Go Nitro message, what you want, if it, if it just says, um, you know, if it's just flashing at you or, or has a little circle with a crossbar in it, that means you're not on the frequency. So if you, if you want to get on the frequency, you hold the power button down until the letters flash in the upper left square. And then you type D and then D again, and then you'll be on. You'll get the Go Nitro message and then it'll say ready. All right, so um, last time on Monday, we looked at a demonstration in which the steel can was crushed by atmospheric pressure. Now that's a little bit different than this figure from um, chapter 11. This is figure 11.3. Uh, and they use a pump to pump out air and what we used was heat to evacuate the air and decrease when it, when it cooled off to decrease the air pressure. So what we're gonna do now is a question about pressure. All right, so let me start this. And we're gonna have several clicker questions today. So now this one, read carefully. The entire room is quiet. You're thinking. Good. I got you right where I want you. And you guys, when you're working on my exams, especially clicker questions, but especially exams, always read carefully. Don't breeze through. I write very carefully what to put down in the questions. 10 seconds to vote. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Outstanding. We have 100. You know, the, the, the uh, enrollment for this class is 224. Anybody in here new today? Raise your hand if you're new. You just got in overnight. I saw somebody in the back go like this and then put their hand back down. <laughs> anyway, welcome. Uh, we got 180 answers on this one. Let me shut it down and see. Let me just see what the results are here. Uh-huh. Well, it seems like you guys are pretty smart. 74% of you voted for A, and that is actually correct. Now, I have a picture here of an M1A1 Abrams tank, and it's a real picture. It's backing up into that big cargo plane. Notice what those GIs are carrying up into the, see what that is? Can you guys make that out? It looks, they're playing a piece of plywood. That thing's gonna go up. And I had a friend in the Air Force and he, his specialty was loading. I mean, he was a load master, I think is what they called him. You know, he's a master sergeant and he specialized in loading up these big babies. And he said, you know, Thomas, we put these big, M1 Abrams tanks in there, no problem. They're designed for that, the plane. But he said, you know, if, if one of the officers, one of the female officers walks up in there with high heel shoes, she'll destroy the surface. It's not meant for that kind of pressure. 
That's why tanks have those big tracks. It distributes their weight over many, many uh, square inches, many, many square centimeters. All right, so write that down, pounds per square inch. Yeah, that's a, that's a form of pressure. Pressure is um, a number, it's, it's not a vector, it's a, it's a scalar quantity that encodes the amount of force per unit area, so pounds per square inch, newtons per square meter, uh, and we're going to be talking that, about that in uh, a few minutes. Now, I want to, um, before we get down into that, um, I want to talk about this word symbol, symbols. And it's going to be very important for you to, to remember what I tell you about the word symbol. It comes from the Greek symbolon. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that. Anybody here speak Greek? Okay, well, I'm pronouncing it perfectly then, I guess. Uh, anyway, symbol, um, it comes from the Greek two root words, sim, s, uh, upsilon, and, and mu, sigma, upsilon, mu, which means together. Uh, for instance, the word symphony comes from that, with that root word. And then the second part is bolon, which means to throw. And an example word in English that uses that Greek root is ballistic. You know, a, you know, throwing a baseball, that's a ballistic arc. Um, now, today we think of this word as like an icon. Like here's a little icon of Chuck Norris concepts. All right. And so that's what we think about a symbol today. You know, something that is, you know, like an icon or something. But back in the old days, they didn't... They, when they used that word, they used it slightly differently. And the original meaning was, it's kind of disgusting. You know, they take the leg bone of a, you know, a, a cow or something, and then they split it in half. Um, and then that's what they, you know, one party, you know, they're making a deal of some kind, you know, buying a piece of land or whatever it is. And one party takes one half and the other party takes the other half. And that's how they confirm the deal, all right? And one of the ways that you can think about what that means is in the current day, you ever seen one of these pair of necklaces with the, you know, BFF type of a thing? You know, and they've got all kinds of romantic ones, you know. They've got some weird ones. But that's, that's, a, that's um, something that, in, you know, the Greeks would have understood, you know, 2,000 years ago you know, the days of Homer and, and all those guys, you know, putting something together to indicate that you've got um, some kind of relationship. Okay, now that's a physical thing. The other thing that they sometimes use the word symbol on for, and this is what is important for us, uh, is that sometimes they use the word for a text, you know, like a paragraph of writing. And one of the ways that they use that word is, you know, in certain usages, certain writings, a passport. You know, or, uh, you know, in other writings, a certificate. And they use the word symbol. Now, we don't use it that way. You know, we always think of, you know, an icon, you know, the symbol for, you know, uh, Starbucks or whatever, you know. But in, the, in those days, it, the word symbol could mean a letter, a passport, something like that. Something significant, sentences, communication that encode um, an entire relationship. And that is how we are going to uh, think and work our way through all the material that we have for us this semester. In other words, what we're going to do is work out problems together in lecture and as homework that are symbols for each chapter. In other words, for us, you know, problem 73 um, can be a symbol for chapter 11, with probably one or two symbols. Um, and those encode most of the concepts of the chapter. So if you take that symbol, that problem, and if you really savvy it and understand it, 
then that means you're going to understand most of the stuff in the chapter or you'll be able to read up on most of the stuff in the chapter and it'll make sense to you, all right? And the reason I'm bringing this up to you is simply because um, in a summer semester, we have to go really fast. And you guys, many of you will be professional users of scientific information as doctors, nurses, physical therapists, and so forth. And you will have to be able to remember a few symbols of fluids, a few symbols of the electromagnetic interaction, a few symbols about x-rays. Because, you know, you pass your, your MCAT, you get admitted to medical school, you go through, you survive four years of medical school, and then you got to go and do your internship and then a residency. What if you decide to do radiology? There's a lot of physics in that, x-rays. You know, so that's why I say keeping the textbook handy is not a bad move. And I know a lot of you guys want to get rid of it, even burn it when you're done with it. But, uh, but anyways, so every, so when I'm working on stuff in class with you and in homework, I want you to think of the word symbol in the ancient Greek meaning. All right, fluids chapter 11. Fluids, as they say in the book, things that flow. Now, steel on this desk, your chairs and so forth, is solid, but if you, if you get it up to the right temperature, it's fluid. You know, you go to one of those big blast furnaces out in Pittsburgh, PA, and, uh, you know, they pour the stuff, you know, it's just burn, you know, like in the Terminator movie, you know, they, you know, they burn this boiling molten steel, you know, and it's fluid, it flows. Hydrogen is a gas. You know, we always think about hydrogen gas, you know, um, as, as a gas, but, it, you know, it, it can actually be solidified under the right pressure and temperature conditions. So, you know, hydrogen, fluid, solid, yeah, most forms of matter um, can attain, if you get the right pressure and temperature, a solid, a liquid, or a gas state. All right. Now, the F equals MA concepts from Newton's second law that you studied last, uh, last course, 2053, momentum, energy of zillions and zillions of atoms or molecules, um, those concepts encode all the interatomic or intermolecular interaction. So in other words, when we say that two uh, hydrogen atoms are bound covalently into an H2 molecule, that's because of the electromagnetic interaction between the, the nuclei and the electron that's bound, or the two electrons that are bound, all right? And so for, re and here's another one, crystalline bonds. Those are encoded. I mean, a, 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 a scientist that studies crystals thinks of the bonding energy. All right, so when you were studying one half mv squared and mg minus mgy for your uh, uh, you know gravitational potential energy and stuff, yeah, that's that's interesting and stuff, but also on the atomic level and for fluids, it's really important. Okay, and so you so the interatomic bonding distinguishes a solid like a crystal from a liquid, and Everybody in this room knows of a substance every day that you use as a solid and as a liquid. What do you think it is? I see you nodding your head. What do you think it is? Yeah, H2O. Ice, solid ice, liquid water. And you know what outside? Gas, uh, water vapor in the atmosphere for weather. So... And that's why I like this photograph, because this one shows, you know, it's a beautiful sunset, so it's nice to look at, but it shows um, an atmosphere that's filled with clouds, and the lower clouds that are kind of behind, in front of the sun, kind of grayed out there, uh, those are micro droplets of liquid water, okay? They exist up in the atmosphere because of water vapor that's invisible as a gas rose and then condensed at a certain altitude. But then way above there, the whispery, wispy ones up there are cirrus clouds, and those are ice crystals. So this one, you can see the signs of all three phases for water. And two of the phases 
Liquid and vapor are considered fluids. Now, let's get to pressure. You know, we were talking about the, you know, the stiletto heels and the M1 Abrams tank and the big difference in pressure. So let's talk about pressure. It's basically an intrinsic, an extrinsic measurement uh, that encodes the zillions of exchanges of momentum from zillions of molecules or atoms that um, ricochet off the walls of a given container per second. All right, so here's an O2 molecule in red, and it bangs into that vertical wall on the right, and then it ricochets off to the upper uh, left over there, and you know goes along its merry way. Now, when it does that, it exchanges equal but opposite delta P with the wall. Right? So if the wall's made of water, it won't do that. You know, the wall's got to be rigid to contain something like a gas. You, you know, you can't make a, a container of gas out of, out of, you know, something that's not solid. Okay? And so um, the change of mold, the delta P exchange with the wall equates to a force. Now, here's the delta P of the molecule. Go ahead and sketch in this ricochet, All right? And there's your delta P to the left. You know, bangs off. It's basically, it's, it's heading up to the right, and after the interaction, it's heading up, but now it's going to the left, so it gets a little bit of oomph to the left, all right? Now, by the same token, Newton's third law, equal but opposite reaction, bing, you get the same amount except it's to the right if you're the wall, all right? And that is what we measure, all right? Because, and because of Newton's third law, we know that those um, are equal. So we can't see individual oxygen molecules or individual CO2 molecules, but we know there's zillions of them. And if we do a little bit of calculus, a little bit of trig, a little bit of stats, we can figure out, you know, what the laws, you know, the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. You might remember that from chemistry class. Uh, we can figure out all that stuff. All right. So um, now, how do we measure pressure? Uh, and as I mentioned before, pounds per square inch, yeah. That's a unit. Uh, anybody in here uh, a scuba diver? They, you have your... What do you, when you fill up your tanks, is it in PSI or, or uh, Pascals or atmospheres or what? Up at the top. PSI. Anybody else have tanks? What do, you, do you remember if it's PSI or not? PSI, yeah. Yeah, so what, do you remember, is it like thousands of PSI or something? I mean, because those aqua lungs, they have to be really stout. Really strong. I don't see that I have PSI, so I didn't know that there's so much PSI. Yeah, okay. 2,000 PSI. 2,000 PSI, okay. That's a lot of PSI. You know what atmospheric pressure is? 15, 14.7. It's pretty, and even that's a lot. Okay, in the metric system, Pascal's symbol PA. In fundamental units, Newton per square meter. You know, so if you have a container and you count up all the little zillions of delta P per second, that gives you a force. You know, delta P over delta T is a force. And then if you count them up for every square centimeter or every square meter, then that'll give you the ratio of that will give you the pressure. Another one that you hear on the Weather Channel and stuff, uh, millibars, bars and millibars. The Weather Channel, you know, fair weather... Um, at sea level is considered to be 1,013.25 millibars. And I looked up the air pressure this morning, it was a little high, uh, 1,019. Uh, one atmosphere, this is another uh, unit of pressure that you sometimes see. And, uh, you know, so, and 1.0 atmosphere is fair weather at sea level, and that's, you know, 1,013.25. So you go to Cocoa Beach, you get out your barometer, you know, and it'll read 
um, 1,013.25 millibars, if it's not in the middle of a hurricane, if it's a fair day. And it's, it's incredible. If you think about this, 1,013 millibars, fair weather sea level. But just a few millibars below that, you know, 980, you're talking a hurricane. And that's not even a 10%. That's like a 2% dip in the pressure. You know, over the space of a few hundred miles, you go from fair weather to a hurricane, to a, a bad hurricane. It's pr the atmosphere is pretty amazing. Now, I want to work out an example with you um, of how counting up the delta P per second over a given area translates to a pressure, newtons per square meter. All right, so I'm going to ask you to think about 20 tennis balls impacting a, uh, a solid wall 0.8 square meters, okay? So here are the specs. Go ahead and write these down. We're just going to, I'm going to work out the calculations with you. Step, we're just going to go step by step, okay? Now, uh, I looked up the official mass of a tennis ball is about 56 grams, so that's 0 0.056 kilograms. Up to, and it's up to about 59 grams, I think. But we use 0 0.056. And let's just say that I have a special tennis ball gun. And the tennis ball gun uh, rips them out at the velocity 10.3 meters per second. Okay, so that's like 20-something miles an hour. And let's say that this, we got it aimed into the surface straight in. So it's going to come bouncing straight back. All right? So when it ricochets... You know, it, it gets some momentum straight back, and it deposits momentum straight in, all right? And that'll simplify for us. Now, a real gas, it, you know, you, they're, they're coming in at all zillions of different angles and stuff, and that's where calculus and trig come in. Uh, we're going to ignore that for the moment. And let's say that we have 20 of them, so n equals 20. And let's say that it, it's per second. In other words, we get 20 of these tennis ball collisions per second. All right? So 20 delta Ps per second over a surface area of 0 0.8 square meters. And I just made these numbers up. Just so that I looked up the mass of a tennis ball, then I made the rest of it up. Just so we have, you know, some nice numbers to, to calculate with. All right? Here we go. The momentum on the way into the interaction to the surface is, you know, P equals MV, all right? Now, I wrote this in as a vector. Positive means inward to the surface, and a negative will mean back out, away from the surface, straight back out, all right? So 0 0.056 kilograms for each tennis ball, and they're all going 10.3 meters per second with my special tennis ball machine. And go ahead and verify me on that, 0 0.5768. Anybody verify me on that? Get your calculators out, see if you can verify me on that. 0 0.056 times 10.3, okay, good. Thank you, Maya. Okay, good. Now that's one. And if it's a perfect rebound, the momentum on the way out is the opposite of that. All right, so let's assume that it, it, it doesn't lose any kinetic energy and, and it does change its momentum. So it's coming back out at negative 0 0.5768 kilogram meters per second. All right. Now, delta P, that's P out minus P in, P final minus P initial. All right, so that means we, we take minus 0 0.5768 and subtract a positive 0 0.5768. And what do we get? Negative 1.1536. Anybody verify me on that? So that's 0 0.5768 times 2. Any verification on that? Okay, good. 
All right. Now, I want you to verify me on this stuff because every once in a while I'll throw in a, a red herring to see if you guys are awake and see if I can catch you napping. Do not let me catch you napping. All right. So there's my delta P. And that's one tennis ball. Now, the thing is, we got 20 per second. All right. So we got to multiply that by 20. And that's the tennis ball. Now, equal but opposite for the wall. Now, I have a clicker question for you about this interaction. But let me pause for questions. I do not want to catch you napping. Okay, you guys are geniuses. Good. Here's your question. Question number two for today. What's the delta P change in momentum for the wall? La, la, la. Okay. La, dee, da. La, 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 la. Thirty seconds. Newton's third law, so wonderful. Fifty seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, one seventy eight. Somebody didn't vote. Right now, let's take a look. La la la, we got a lot of distribution. Now, what that tells me is you're not all convinced at what the answer should be. So we're gonna have, that means we're going to have to talk it over for a minute. All right, let me go back to the laptop. All right. The answer is A. And A was second place. Yeah, the wall gets whatever the tennis ball gets, but the opposite sign, all right? So the tennis ball gets um, negative five point blah, 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 times 20. So that's about 11, negative 11 point. And so whatever that is, the wall gets the opposite. And that, my wonderful students, is uh, the momentum per second that goes into the, that the wall absorbs, all right? So delta P over delta T, all right? Now we got the numerator, 11.536 kilogram meters per second. And that's just one second worth. So the denominator is one second. So, um, so now you have kilogram meters per second per second or kilogram meters per second squared, and my wonderful students, that is a Newton. So what we have there is a force, one second worth of tennis balls from my machine, 20 tennis balls, exert that much force on this particular piece of wall, and it's, but now what we want to do is distribute it over that 0 0.8 square meters. Because remember, a pressure is a force per unit area, right? So now we divide by the area, and there it is, 11.536 newtons. And so every second, you're getting that much force, 
and you're getting that much force in this little area. Now, if you have a bigger area, you're going to get maybe 37 tennis balls or 206, you know, if you have a bigger area. But square meter for square meter, yep, it's, it's going to work out to 14.42. Question. That's 20 times negative 0 0.57, whatever it was. Because it's 20. It, question. We did. Well, look, this is, I mean, you can do it before, or you can do it after. Here it is before. Okay, all right, and multiply that by 20 per second. Okay, and so this is, so this is per second, all right? And then you calculate all the way through, just like this, and you get 14.42. Now, I want to take a five minute break, and then we're gonna come back and do some calculations on the document cam. Okay. Come back at four o eight. Dividing this by two and then multiplying by twenty. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's okay. right. Okay. Did you send me a message? No. About something? No. Okay. No. Because you're not dividing by two properly. That's all. Where? What do you mean? Well, this is um, Yeah, you've got it. So 20 times this is a negative 11. Right. And so so what that means is that the, the wall gets the opposite of that. So Why would you 11. pick P out though versus P in? Because that's the out. So that's the recoil. So, right? so that's when it bounces up? Yeah, it's, no, that's the net leftward or the net backwards recoil. Do you have a question? Yeah, but were you sitting in the aisle? Oh, okay. 
You were yesterday though, right? What? Yeah. Okay, that's all right. Uh, I'll find some chairs because I keep ending up late because uh, I don't want to end up sweaty. Uh, question: If it, the ball ricochets, would not another ball hit it on the way over? What we're going to do now is uh, talk a little bit more about some of the other equations uh, in the textbook. Um, and I want to um, start with a little bit of a sketch that um, uh, will help you understand this concept. This is the volume flow rate that they mention uh, fairly early in the chapter. The amount of fluid coming out through a pipe or hose per second depends on, first of all, the density, then the velocity at any, any given point, V, and then the cross-sectional area of the conduit, you know, whether it's a pipe or a hose or whatever it happens to be. Now, we're going to write an equation that expresses that idea, and then we're going to use it to solve an example uh, from Chapter 11. And we're going to go with the document camera. Uh, and I'm going to do it on my um, uh, special notebook that allows me to record uh, and uh, give you a talking PDF uh, that you can review later. So we're going to look at an example from uh, chapter 11, page 298, and then maybe a few more, like number 73 after that. Okay, so I'm going to pause the, the YouTube Keep your clickers ready. We're going to do a calculation in a few minutes. Oops, that's the wrong. Here we go. Same basic problem. And we're just going to calculate the upward lift here. So the Acme aircraft hangar. Flat roof, 22.4 times 31.8. So you can figure out the area. It's buttoned up ni uh, nice and tight. So no wind inside. And so VI is zero. So that's good. That makes it like the, the problem we just did. Ambient air pressure and temperature lead to an air density of 1.29. Wind speed gusts. Now here's your, here's your velocity, V, O, oh, outside, 39.34, which is exactly 88 miles an hour. All right, so calculate the upward lift. All right, so this one's a little bit different from the one we just did. That one you were supposed to figure out the speed, but this one, and Hey, you guys, on this one, it's a numeric problem. So what you do is you type in your answer to the nearest Newton, okay? And then you hit, so like, tw so if your answer is 23,908.77, type in 23,909 and then hit the send key. You have to type in your numbers. Oh, and by the way, there's no decimal point. Hit the refresh key if you're not getting it. And it'll start you on the letter A, I think. Hit the refresh key, and then you'll start on the letter A. And then go up and down to get numbers. I think it's down below. All right? And so just choose them, and then hit the right arrow key, and, and then choose another number. And, and you don't have to put a decimal sign in, but you do have to hit the send key. And I see some of you have already... Send in answers. Oh my goodness. Some of you have already gotten it. Oh my goodness. You guys are cooking. Oh, oh. Oh, no. You guys are doing good. And when you get your answer and you click it in, if you get a check mark, you can be dismissed. Or you can wait and see what the answer is, because that's on the next slide. 
I can't believe we got through all this stuff. And students, I, I mentioned that there was uh, a chapter 18 uh, homework. I couldn't get it fixed up before class. So I'll assign that a little bit later tonight, and it'll be pretty easy just to do a little bit of reading and skimming. Do tomorrow, though. So you'll have two for tomorrow. Both of them fairly easy. Come on up here if you want to check your answer. You want to check it? Yeah. Dude. That's right. No. That is... You f did you use eight? No, you didn't use eighty-eight. What did you use? Um, what I did was I did twenty-two point four times thirty thirty-one point eight to get the area, and then I squared the velocity. <laughs> Not quite. No. Yes. Uh, close, but you rounded off weird. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, you know what? Did you? That's your problem. You rounded off too fast. I carry all the digits I can until the very end, and then I round them. That's. No, I can grade it. I can grade it correct. Yeah, I, I can grade it to be correct. Yeah, you're welcome. It's pretty cool. You know, you're within a few, yeah, within a hundred newtons, so you're, you're good. Another round off, but I'll, I'll grade it correctly. I can see it up here, too. So. Ding! Ding! Did you get a check mark? Yeah. You hit the send key? Yeah. Can you tell what I did wrong based on what I have written? Yeah, maybe. You didn't square this. Ah, uh, dang it. Okay. Hurry up and do it before. Okay. <laughs> and if you want to keep working on it, there's nobody coming in after us. So if you want to stay a few extra minutes, it's fine. Do you? Hi. Oh, all right. Yeah, we need to get a clicker, okay? And if you have a friend that, um, you know, like a roommate or something that has one and they're not using it, you can use it. And just register it through web courses. And there's a little um, button at the upper left in web courses. It says iClicker. And all you got to do is type in your email address and your, um, the little number on the back of it. Yeah. I, I'm going to probably downgrade that assignment because it got blooped up by a lot of people. So don't worry about that one. But we will have some tonight. As a matter of fact, there's one going to start at, at 5 o'clock in just a few minutes. So hopefully you'll be able to get that one. No, to, it's, it's bonus points right now. The official start of official participation is next Monday. So... And welcome to class. Ding! Yes, that means good. Yeah? I sent you the email. Oh, hi, Sophia. Yeah, I did it yesterday. Actually, it just ran like rush from work and got here. Okay. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. I had a question about the homework. Quick question. We're doing fluids in the lab. You have no control of the lab, right? No, I don't. Yeah, it's always like that. It's I'm trying to cover what we're supposed to cover. Okay. And the labs can be way out of sync. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, just get used to it. Right, cool. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> I just had a question about the homework. It says I didn't submit it, even though it says that, uh, even though I, like, submit each individual like, answer. Yeah, and you got to scroll. I've That happened to me, and you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom right, and there's a submit button or something. Yeah, I... I know it's 
it's stinkomatic sometimes. We just got to get yeah, and I, I'm going to downgrade that assignment because it, it there's a lot of bloopers going. So yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. Ding. You may, you may record it. I don't mind, but I YouTube it. You know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just, like, I just like have I've done it ever since like near UCF and everything. So this support for that. Yes, yes, you may. Ding. Hydrogen, yeah. yeah. So how would you describe this? You know, they, hydrogen can be liquefied. That's what they do out at Kennedy Space Center. You know, they have liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen for the liquid-fueled rockets. For the tanks? Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what the tanks are full, filled with. I thought it was full of helium, or is that something else? No, not, a, not for a rocket. Hydrogen and oxygen, they oxidize. Boom, big explosion. You control it in the engine, you know, and it goes up. And you so, know about the positrons? They have like a different charge. Are we going to cover that by any chance? A little bit. A yeah. little bit? Okay, that's mm -hmm. cool. So how would, in like physics, mirror, how would you describe like a mirror though? Like a... A mirror? Like, yeah, because someone told me it's liquid, but it's like someone actually... Yeah. I've never heard that. You never heard that? No, oh, but okay. uh, you, you can make a liquid if it's still, you know, just like in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, the mirror of Galadriel. It's just wa water, yeah. yeah, mystic water. Mystic water. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it's any kind of surface that's flat and reflects will be a good mirror. Okay, that makes sense. So, All right. Thanks. So if you want to use it to focus something, all you got to do is spin it, because it'll it'll form a. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, we better. Um, I'm going to be here for uh, questions. Yeah. Oh, I got it right. Oh. What? You got it right? I didn't put that into the thing, though. I didn't do it right until later. How far were you off by a few? I was off by a lot. Oh, okay. I didn't square the, the velocity. Yeah, you got to square 39.34. Yeah, you got to square it. Somebody else didn't square it, and they... You know, it's still running. So you can actually type in recalculate. Even though I just gave the answer away. <laughs> oh, nice going, Dr. B. Everybody's going to get a good grade now. Anyway, question. question about this one that we did earlier. Yeah. Um, okay, I understand we did that. Mm -hmm. multiply just this times mm -hmm. 20? You get minus, t yeah. Okay, so... Is there a reason why we do Yeah, because we were dividing by two on that. Um, you know what? I'll do another example of that uh, to start class on when, tomorrow, Wednesday. Okay. Boy, going every day. <laughs> I, there's no breaks. Yeah. You know, like during the normal semester, it's every Tuesday, day. Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, always a day in between. But not, I mean, not in summer B. At least we, we don't have time to forget. So yeah, I, I guess there, there is that, yeah. Thank you. All right, good. Did you say that we're just squaring the velocity or are we squaring? The no, you square the you square 39 point, you know, whatever the velocity is. Yeah, it's so just the velocity. We don't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. one half. Yeah, this one I replace. I take it. I normally replace this by 0.645. Okay, yeah. Because it's one half times 1.29. <laughs> okay, cool. Thank but yeah, and then square the velocity only. Yeah. Good. Okay, thank you. Okay. Question? Question. Cha ching. And we just hit send, correct? Yeah, hit the send key and you're good. Hey. I just have a quick question about one of the questions that was in the quiz yesterday. Um, it said that the QA and QB, the pressures at the end uh -huh. of the pipe were um, same in both pipes. Mm -hmm. um, but this was twice as long. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just asking about the flow rates um, comparatively. Um, if the pressure is the same, yeah. then the flow rates are going to be... Well, what about the areas? The areas are the same as well. 
uh, and it's a viscous fluid. It's a viscous fluid. I can't remember if that L is in there. The length of the pipe is in there for yeah, viscous so fluid. The length here was L, and then this was twice as two, long. Two L. Um, so does that? Let me.